Hi everyone, this is another demo video uh, from the Virtual Trombonist on using Logic Pro X as a practicing tool for musicians. Uh, in a previous blog post, I talked about, uh, as a trombone player, how I use Logic Pro X to do long tones. And in specific, I like using a visual click track to note where my note starts line up and how my sound is responding and my airflow and all those kind of things. Um, as a visual learner myself, I find that visual feedback of seeing the metronome click and seeing the sound wave from my trombone sound, uh, getting to see that really makes an impression on me and I have found it to be a very good aid for me in practicing some of my fundamentals. So one of the things I've had to figure out was how do you actually put a visual click track into Logic? Logic has a great uh, metronome feature called Klopfgeist. Um, and uh, I use it quite frequently. And um, I needed to find out a way to record that so that we can visually see that. So let's go to um, Logic Pro and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so here we are in Logic Pro. I have a new blank project opened up. And uh, let's go to full screen view here. So I've got one audio track here that's gonna be for my practicing, my trombone recording. I need to create a second track to record the cloth guys to. And before I do that, um, we need to go to the mixer and you can go to the mixer here, but I like using the full screen view. So I use command two. And we've got to find the track for the Klopfgeist. And as you can see, it's not available here. We can't see it. So let's widen out our channel strips and you have to go select all tracks. Now we have the click track and you can see that the input plugin is the Klopfgeist. So I need to send this Klopfgeist signal somewhere other than the stereo outputs so that I can record it. I'm essentially going to reroute it back into, into the um, DAW so that we can uh, send it to a track and record it. So first I need to create an auxiliary channel strip. I'm going to send this to bus three. And you can see it created this auxiliary strip. Input is bus three, still going to the stereo out. Um, don't forget when you create the bus, you have to turn the signal to that bus up. And sometimes it's hard to get it set exactly to zero. So there's a cool thing you can do in Logic. Instead of uh, sliding it with the mouse, you can just take option and click and it sets it to unity gain, it sets it at zero dB. So that's what we want. Okay, now I'm ready to create my new track and I'm creating an audio track. My input, instead of my uh, mic preamps or anything, it's going to be set to the bus, the auxiliary channel strip that we just created for the click. Okay, output to the stereo outputs. All right, now let me label that too. Always know visually exactly what I'm looking at. That's helpful to me sometimes. Okay, we're done uh, with our mixer. We can close that up. Now it's time to record our click track. So I have the click turned on here. Um, you can either click on it or a K key turns on the metronome. <clears throat> I'm at the beginning and this is record enabled. So let's hit R to record. Now I'm gonna record about eight measures of the click track. And we can hear it starting to, um, or see it rather, putting the uh, sharp ticks on the waveform. Okay, so I said about eight bars and then, you know, I've got a little bit more than that. So let me show you how I, I trim this up to get it exactly eight bars long. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to put the playhead on bar the beginning of bar nine and I've got to get rid of all this here so you can you can use the trim feature um, 
But if you have your snapping turned on, and I like to leave it on smart snap so that when I zoom in, it snaps to pretty much the um, uh, segment that I need. So I turn on my marquee tool and just select right up to bar nine, and then I hit delete. Now it's trimmed, it's exactly eight bars long. That's important because now, say that I'm recording something longer, I need a longer bit of click. Now all I have to do is loop this. So if I want 16 bars, I just loop it out, and there you go. So let's check it and see if we can hear it. So um, remember to turn your built-in click off because we want to hear only the recorded click. Okay, I can hear it, it's lined up. Uh, one way to check too is you turn on your Klopfgeist. Notice how it gets louder? It's because now I'm essentially doubling the click. I have the recorded click and the built-in click. But you'll notice that they do line up. You don't hear uh, one being slightly off from the other, and that's what we want. Okay, now one more thing that's helpful is I set this project up and my BPM is set to 120. Well, guess what? I want to practice now at a tempo of quarter note equals 72. So how do I slow this down? It's not a MIDI loop, so I can't just um, hit that BPM adjustment there and, and watch this adjust. I have to do something to it to make it adjust. And what you do is you turn on flex, then you enable flex time for the track. And I like to leave it set on automatic, uh, which it, it, cho it chooses slicing. That's fine. Um, you notice here now in your region inspector that flex is checked. There's a check mark there. So now you turn this off, but the flex remains checked. Okay. So now I can adjust this to 72 and my beat uh, remains lined up with the click. How about, let's go to 90, 96. Cool. So now I can change my tempo while I'm practicing and my click goes with it. I don't have to worry about that. Very handy. I haven't yet figured out why the graphic of the waveform doubles some of these up. You can't hear them, you'll notice, but um, it actually hasn't ever done that to me before. Of course, it waited until I make the video for you guys to do that. So uh, maybe someone knows and they can uh, leave me a comment uh, below. And I'd be curious to know if you if anyone knows why that's happening. But otherwise, that's how you make a visual click track in Logic Pro X. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much for joining me. And you can check out more of this at thevirtualtrombonist.com, as well as there is a finished template you can download that this has already made for you. So unless if you don't want to go to the trouble to make it, go on my website to uh, lessons and lesson materials. And there's a, there's a zip file of this uh, Logic Pro template for you to download. So I hope this has been helpful for you today. And uh, if you do choose to go to the website and download the template, uh, it's completely free. But please subscribe to my email list so that you can be among the first to get any notices of new videos and blog posts I'm producing. Thanks very much for visiting. I hope to see you at virtualtrombonist.com. And please keep the comments coming. I appreciate all the input I get from my readers. Thanks very much.